Hey folks, this is Kalani. Horrific visions can be problematic to get through, especially if you're running them on your own. While it's fun and exciting being able to progress through something at your own pace by your own merits, not being able to rely on some friends for that extra little push can allow things to get a bit messy. Or maybe you've got the perfect group together but you can't quite get that last objective down or that last mask activated, or you've missed your main objective by the skin of your teeth. Well, I have some tips and tricks that will help everyone in their horrific vision adventures, whether you're full clearing with multiple masks or still working towards that first full clear for yourself. Here's some ways to make things considerably easier. The first thing you'll want to do is figure out which potion you shouldn't be picking up. There's five potions in total, four of them give you a beneficial effect, while the last one will nuke your sanity. Obviously, with our sanity being our time limit, that's the last thing you want to happen. Maybe you've been burned a few times trying to pick up these potions because of the fact that they rotate constantly. You can never be quite sure which potion does what when you enter a vision, and that's something you've probably noticed. In one vision, the good sanity potion might be blue, but when you go into the next vision, the blue potion now suddenly decreases your sanity instead. That is by design. They change every time you enter a vision, so you have to figure it out every time for yourself. That may have led you to think the potions just aren't worth it because there's always a chance you'll pick up the bad one because they always change. You can never be sure, right? Well, a few players figured out there's a foolproof way to finding the bad sanity potion incredibly early on in your your visions. There's a dead NPC in the Stormwind vision and in the Ogrimmar vision that have a little note next to them. That note talks about the potions and says they haven't finished their research, which is a shame really because if they could tell us exactly what each potion did, that would be great, but they can only give us one important piece of info. The potion that is always next to these dead bodies is the bad sanity draining potion. So if there's a black potion next to that dead body, all black potions in that run are bad. If it's green, all green potions are bad. Now because only one out of five potions is bad, that means you can eliminate the bad potion immediately at the start of your run, and you know that the other four are not only safe to drink, but they provide you with awesome bonuses. The fire breath can help you kill things faster, the damage reduction might save your life somewhere, and the healing one is great if you're playing a class with poor self heals. The good sanity potion might be the extra boost you need to get all of your objectives done in time, so make sure you check the bad potion at the start of each run so you can pick up every good potion in the run without ever having to worry about losing some sanity. There's also a fantastic add-on that can help you with this too. Handy notes, Visions of Nazoth will place a marker on your map for where to find the body, and if you hover over it on the map it will show you the bad potion to good potion possibilities. So if the bad potion next to the body is black, the good potion will always be green. That takes even more of the guesswork out of it to help you get your visions done faster. Another thing you may have missed in Horrific Visions is the extra buffs that are somewhat hidden away. I say somewhat because they're actually kind of just out in the open, but you might not know what you have to do to pick them up. There's a few buffs in each vision, and they're also handily marked on the map if you have the Handy Notes Visions of Nazoth add-on. These buffs aren't always up for every run, so you'll have to be quick to notice whether the right NPC or interactable object is available for you in your current run. Like the potions, these change every time so they're not always going to be there. Sometimes the buildings are completely blocked off, which will give you a very quick indication that that one is not active. But you can get 10% extra crit, 10% extra damage, 10% extra health, extra haste, extra versatility. They're pretty big buffs, and getting the buffs typically doesn't take very long at all too. You can smash down most of the NPCs you need to kill and you get the buff for the rest of the run. It's definitely worth looking into if you didn't know about these already. A 10% damage buff and a 10% crit chance buff together could skyrocket your damage and lead you to a victory you might not have been able to get otherwise. It's the same story as the potions. It doesn't take very long to see if you're going to be able to benefit from them and actually getting them is super quick too, so it can be a huge time saver overall in the long run. 
Something else that seems to have flown under the radar for a lot of players is the new consumables that you can pick up for horrific visions. Some of these are incredible, and they're available to anyone who has cooking in Battle for Azeroth. You can get a book of recipes from any of Nazoth's cultists out in the world, the same mobs as the Void Shard Profession quest, I think. You can get a movement speed buff, a health regen buff, even a crowd control reduction buff. But the awesome ones here are the Grilled Nasher and the Kebab. The Grilled Nasher does something kind of weird. If you eat long enough to get the well-fed buff, you'll turn into a Kathea mob, and your aggro radius is drastically reduced. You can literally walk by almost any mob in the vision. Some of them do have true sight, and they will see you, so be careful of those, but this means anyone and everyone can skip trash almost as much as they want. All you need is a grilled Nasher. The super cool thing is that if you keep the food buff on, when you sit down to eat it again, you'll actually transform immediately, so you don't even have to waste the 10 seconds every time you want to skip stuff. This has totally changed our routes, and saves us so much time because you don't have to kill all of the trash. Some areas you don't have to kill more than two mobs, so if you can skip the rest, it's almost always a better and faster option to do so. The other good food is the kebab. This will restore 100 sanity if you eat it for 10 seconds. This is the only other way to regain sanity besides potions and sanity orbs, so it's definitely worth looking into. If you eat in the easy area when you get teleported back there after the harder objectives, you'll get the most out of it because you're spending 10 seconds eating, and that area is going to drain your sanity the least. But anytime you have to wait for roleplay, or for a boss to become active, or maybe even just wait to give some of your cooldowns an extra 10 seconds, if you can eat a kebab, it's free sanity. It does have a 3 minute cooldown, so you'll have to use them wisely, but this one consumable could be the difference between you running out of sanity on a full clear, and just and so getting the main objective down. If you think about it, we usually get 2 lusts in most of our visions, so you're in there for at least 10 minutes, maybe 12. At 12 minutes, that's at least 3 kebabs, which is 300 extra sanity. It's a lot more than you might think. And as for any other type of solo content, I would recommend everyone pick up some Lust Drums, some Potions, and of course, some Flasks. Every little helps in this kind of content, so do yourself a favour and bring along as many consumables as you can. The extra DPS will make a difference, especially from Lust Drums if you don't have access to Lust. Trust me. So knowing your potions for a run and taking in some extra kebabs can help keep you a bit more sane, but perhaps the most important thing that you should be doing in each Horrific Vision run is getting the most out of your sanity orbs. You only get three, so you need to maximise them every single time. The first way to do this is to only use an orb when you get low. That's pretty standard stuff. But the second thing you can do is fight on top of your sanity orbs. You can't put an orb down in combat, but you will still benefit from the sanity regeneration and and the insane healing that you get while you stand inside of an orb, even if you're in combat. We always make a point to pull large groups of monsters when we put down an orb, we even try to save our orbs for the really dangerous mobs that deal a lot of sanity damage. If you're regening your sanity constantly, it almost doesn't matter how much sanity damage you take while your orb is active. You're almost invincible inside your sanity orbs, so be sure to make the most out of that. Tracking your sanity properly is also a huge advantage. Seeing the number is fine, you'll need at least that to tell if you're going to go insane or not, but 100 sanity, or 1000 sanity, doesn't really tell you all that much. That's why we use this Sanity Weak Aura, I'll link it in the comments section below. This Weak Aura will do two things which really change the game in Horrific Visions. The first is that you'll be able to very easily see every party member's sanity all together in one neat little window. So you know if Jeff has gone and done it again, standing in all the purple stuff, getting down to 300 sanity somehow while everyone else is coasting cleanly with 1000. Gosh darn it Jeff, now we're going to have to use an orb early again. But instead of asking your party every minute how much sanity everyone has to make sure everyone's okay, now you can just track it super easily yourself. But the real deal with this weak aura is the timer. It will turn your current sanity, plus the current sanity drain, which is dependent on your current area in a vision, combine that info with your current cloak rank, which obviously affects how badly sanity drain affects you, and display an actual timer for how long you have left with your current levels. So instead of 1000 sanity, which doesn't really tell you that much, you can see that's actually 4 minutes of time. If you take sanity damage, you can see that you just lost 10 seconds or 15 seconds worth of time in your vision for that single hit. 
Oof, best not get caught by that ability again. Working with a timer makes so much more sense, and it's just easier to understand. You can also start timing your area clears to see just how long each zone takes, and plan accordingly for how much time remaining you have. It sounds like a small thing, but a timer makes a huge difference in my opinion. Another thing you might want to look into to make your life easier is the Azerite Essence that you decide to run with. This might seem like an obvious choice, but you do have some interesting options here. For any healers out there, take a good look at the Formless Void Essence. It allows you to copy a DPS Essence from anyone in your group and use it as your own. When we run visions together on our mains, Nadara always copies my laser and we go to town on huge packs of mobs. It's actually incredibly efficient, especially now that all monsters have less health if there's a healer in your group. I doubt you would get much use out of a healing major essence, so being able to steal a DPS essence is a huge win for the healers out there. You might also want to look at the Purification Protocol Essence. I know this one doesn't get used all that much because the laser typically does more damage, but hold on a second. Most of the monsters in Visions are Aberrations. The Purification Protocol Major will stun any Aberration for 3 seconds while dealing damage to them. You also don't have to stand there and channel the Protocol Major, it just fires and keeps going while you DPS. It's on a shorter cooldown, and if anything dies you get a 10% damage buff too. And on top top of everything else, it has a chance to just auto-delete any monster that gets hit. If you lack decent crowd control, like an AoE stun, the Purification Protocol gives you a huge AoE stun on a 1 minute cooldown, which has a bunch of other cool effects. On the flip side, that's not going to be the best option for everyone. If you have an AoE stun and good crowd control, and you're comfortable making some big pulls, the Focusing Iris might serve you much better. It does a lot more damage, so if you pull enough to make it worthwhile, that can be a great essence too. I wouldn't take any single target essences unless you rely on them entirely, like Fire Mages, because you still have to work your way through a lot of trash, even if you can skip quite a bit of it thanks to the stealth food buff. And the last tip I have for you in this video is going to be about masks. Don't get disheartened if you struggle with your first mask. The very first one you get, the Mask of the Long Night, that's actually the hardest one to use, by far. Some of the others don't even come close. Losing half of your sanity isn't just half of your timer, but you lose a huge chunk of your safety blanket too. If you kill an elite with 500 sanity while using this mask, you don't get the full benefit of that elite kill. It's insane how much more difficult this one mask Mask makes visions, so when you get your second mask, completely forget about the long night until you're ready to do 5 mask full clears. It's literally the very last mask you would want to activate, maybe that or the daredevil mask. The mask of the burned bridge, and the mask of the pained, and the mask of dark imagination, these three are so, so much easier to use. It's actually crazy. I would wager using two of these masks is still much easier than using the long night mask. So if you want to go for a mask full clear, but the first hard mask has put you off, just go do a run with a burned bridge. All you have to do is not step in the puddles you leave behind. That's literally it, nothing else changes. Or with the mask of dark imagination, when you're below 50% sanity, a random ad will spawn. That ad does absolutely nothing and dies very quickly. The 25% extra damage and healing are the only dangerous parts of these masks. So go try out some of the easy masks before you give up on them. The rewards are definitely worth it. I believe in you, you can do this. But those are my tips and tricks to help you get that first full clear in, or maybe work towards some mask clears. We're still working on our four mask full clear, we managed three masks comfortably, so we should be able to get our four mask full clear this week for sure. The only thing standing in our way is ourselves. But with the right potions, some awesome buff food, and our sanity tracking weak aura, I think we'll be okay. Do you have any tips or tricks you want to share regarding visions and running them more efficiently? How far have you gotten in horrific visions so far? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.